you grappling. What's up, guys? Brian Peterson, and I have Matt here from Las Vegas. Matt, what's up? What's going on? How's it going? Check you guys out on YouTube, so here I am. <laughs> One of the guys That's just like you, the viewers out there that come and visit Coach Brian here at PG. It's very nice to have you here. You did great tonight. I hope you enjoyed the training. Yeah. It was did you learn something? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Matt had a question about a position, and I'd love to show you guys and share it with you guys as I share it with him. Um, the position goes like this. We've got an underhook situation. Well, uh, let me try to break it down. Maybe he shoots for a takedown, and then when he shoots, let's come over here. My right arm ends up getting an underhook. And if you notice, if he grabs, let's say a classic double leg, I can use my, uh, yeah, just hold on, double leg. I can use, you don't have to like lock tight or squeeze, but yeah, just hold your position. I'm gonna get an underhook, and if he start to drive forward, look, I can use this to stop Matt from taking me down. Sometimes what you'll see is a move um, similar to like a cow catcher. Um, if you come around here, a guy may grab your tricep muscle on this side, and he may whip you over to your back like this. This can be bad for you. Can you imagine? You get thrown to your back and your head is stuck, and then the guy like walks his fingers until the submission. You all right? Okay, right there. Sorry about that. Yeah, we just gave Matt a little stretch of the neck. Be very careful, guys. Some academies, they look down on that move because they no neck cranks, it's dangerous. Again, if you're at a place like mine, we always love to do those moves, but we do them very slow with safety in mind. Um, so that's a move. But not just that, it's, it stifles your attack. So a guy will get his arm in there, and then there's good ideas like fireman's carries and stuff like that, but we're gonna give you a, a different answer today. So can you do this to me? Yeah. So when I shoot, I go here, and you see I can't like take him down because of this underhook. Now that underhook prevents me from advancing forward. Of course, I have to worry that he may throw me. So if he throws, in this case, he threw me to my back and he let my head out. Do you see that? And, and now he's got the classic position. Let's go back and let's, we're gonna give you guys a bunch of stuff here. We might as well. The more the merrier. Just keep my head. So if, if you move the guy, just before Matt did it, Matt circled to his right, and what that does is it positions my head in the middle of his chest. So now, let's say you keep the tricep. the tricep, if he throws me, I go to my back and I end up like this, or possibly like this, in a more standard control. If you want to get the move I just showed, you need to keep my head in the armpit so don't circle to the right. Just let, check the throw, but keep the arm. Now, why do I wanna be here? Immediately, if I'm here, I must have this arm come through. If this arm gets stuck either between his legs, that's a bad spot, because now his knee is in my armpit, or across his waist, like this, that's horrible. Another variation is Matt could pummel an underhook with his left hand and then lock his hands. Oh my gosh, this is getting horrible. Now you can see, go ahead and you get to give me a little feedback. Oh, right there, beautiful. So, was that the move of the night? No. It was, we don't want to get caught there, so I'm going to give you guys what to do. And there's a couple things I can do but one of them is the spin through. So there's a wrestler, just by the way, um, came from Pennsylvania, uh, wrestled at Iowa University. Uh, I believe he did pretty good at the NC2As this year, but he was not a finalist. And uh, uh, Austin DeSanto, king of the spin through. He used this move in his, in his career a ton, and he was a master of using the spin through. So we're gonna do the spin through. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna grab the triceps, post my hand, immediately. I pull the elbow out, I'm gonna rotate my hips. You've probably done this in your training 
in your uh, warm-ups. You do almost like a, like a hip ice drill, like this, but when you land, don't land on your right butt cheek like I just did. Our goal is to land on our left butt cheek. So now watch, I rotate and I land this way. Now by doing this, it's very important that you clamp your elbow in so that his arm is basically locked in a Kimura. So I'm gonna take, just stay there. Yeah. I'm gonna take my arm out and you guys can see his arm's in the L shape like a Kimura. So I'm applying force like this, but it's grip and then my elbow pinches his wrist, his forearm. So now I have that Kimura. His goal is to straighten his elbow. So straighten the elbow, that's what he should do. So he does not get kimura If I continue to rotate with it in a bent position, he will be cranked so bad, it will put his head into the mat and it might even make him do a forward roll. So my goal is to stop his forward roll. I wanna cover the head and then come to here. Now come around guys, to, to this side. Now if you look, his hand straightened and came out to a more natural position this way. If now I'm gonna show you, if his hand was still in the Kimura, it would look like this. See the elbow pinch? Now keep your arm bent for a second. I don't wanna hurt Matt, but if my head is here, I now have sort of like a submission. If my shoulder is in his back, this is gonna do some damage as I walk in this direction. It is unrealistic you're gonna get your opponent like that. But it is realistic if you're really good and your opponent is not knowing what's going on. But at two levels being the same, it's not gonna happen. It's probably gonna straighten and twist out naturally. When it does, don't lose your wrench that you have on the triceps and keep that bind on his arm. So uh, let me show you again. So I shot, he blocked, and he's using an underhook. I grip. Even if he attempted to throw me, I don't care. I keep rotating towards my left butt cheek. His hand is completely fixed already, but that's okay. Look at how this hand is like a wrench. As I coil around, I capture his head and I rotate this way. And now, once you guys come to here, I'm gonna start propping myself up. I'm on my quads, propping myself up here in my front headlock position. I've got the chin, I've got the pull of the tricep. This is tight. I'm at the elbow. If he closes his elbow, I don't allow it. I'm sorry. I put my shoulder in his neck and I pull this so he can't do much. The simple approach is to snap his head down, position the knee and come around. Once I come to the side, we can go into our crucifix type attacks, okay? We can go towards the back if we wanna go to the back. If it's MMA, we can go to these kind of positions. You can jump on the back, put your hooks in, choke the guy out. So this is I, what we call the simple spin through, just a spin through. And again, you don't have to wait for him to try to throw you. You're gonna rotate the elbow and spin through and rotate your whole body. I wanna stress again how I drop my butt and then I'm gonna let you try it. So I go here, I grip. Now watch how I pinch, I pinch. And now watch how I'm gonna fall all the way to this side. So I rotate and I'm like this. Now at this moment, I've got his arm. Even if he's trying to straighten, I'm not letting him. I'm coming up here on his head. If the man does a forward roll right now, go ahead, you'll end up here. Look what you end up with. You end up with a tricep arm in your armpit in the most natural kind of pin position like this. It's kind of cool. But if you can stop him from rolling by capturing his head and going to the front headlock with your shoulder, Man, it's gonna be tight, and you're gonna have a nice front headlock. Going to the back is gonna be good. Anacondas, uh, there's gonna be the Dave Schultz choke. We're gonna show you the Schultz in the future. So tune in, um, let's try it. All right. Your turn, Matt. So, okay. so Matt, Matt's wrestling, boom, I caught the underhook. Now look at me, guys. Look at how my move, oh, even over here, look at my hand. I mean, like some guys are gonna grab you like this, that feeds this move. Even if I do this, like a block like this, or guys will try to grab your wrist. All of this, it's gonna work anyway, because even if I try to block, even if I stop his arm from spinning, 
Do, do it slow so I don't face plant. Look what happens to my nose. I have to let go because my face is gonna go right in the mat. And that's the thing, like Austin DeSanto, I bring him up, but he was so good at that. And he's not the inventor. Guys, this move's been around forever. Again, they were doing this in ancient Greece. I guarantee it, it's such a simple move. So, we're here. So if you want to stay on this arm and show. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. once you get to your left butt cheek, then this then hand's gonna leave. Okay. This is your support, your power, to help you rotate. Go ahead, boom, now, you're right there in the front headlock, and now look at his grip on my triceps. My elbow is out, I'm not, I'm not, not in danger of a, uh, like a shoulder lock, but if you pull on that, like, I can't, yeah, I can't get my arm back. He can constantly like pull me around, and man, if you're a jujitsu guy, guys, you're gonna be like, can I just sit to guard, but just pull, yeah, no, no, just stay, just pull, Keep pulling. No, 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 not that way. Go the other way. Yes. Do you see what's happening? You see, now you can take advantage of side control. You see, go towards the back. So for the answer of, I'm gonna say it, the classic jujitsu guy, when you start doing moves that are like wrestling intensive, it tends to make the, the jujitsu man pull guard. And again, guys, I'm one of them. So I'm not trying to talk smack, but we t I do it too. If I have a big guy, man, sometimes I got to protect myself. I got to get myself to my guard and protect myself. But when you have a guy that does that and he kind of folds over to his side, starts pulling guard, you got to keep your pressure on so you can dominate and then get something good. Don't go into a man's guard. That's a good position for him. Um, that's the spin through. What do you think? Try it, yeah. try it again, okay. try it again. And again, guys, you could end up here a bunch of ways. Um, maybe he shoots and I catch the under, maybe not. Maybe I get a front headlock first. We watch this combo. This is how the discussion came up between me and Matt. He shoots, I sprawl, and I'm going front headlock. Now, what is Matt doing? Matt's going drag, okay? We've got a video on the drag. He's going drag out, or a lot of people call sucker drag, okay? The drag out or the sucker drag is a great technique to get out of a front headlock. The problem with it is sometimes when I recognize and I say, Matt's got a good drag out. He, he shoots, I go front headlock. When he has a good drag out, I go here. Why do I go here? I go here because now my arm cannot be arm dragged because it's here. If it was here in the front headlock, he would have an avenue to get to my back. So I just go, it's a very natural thing. Every wrestler, they, they just come back here like, you're not dragging me out yeah. now. But now, Matt's got this spin through. Boom! And he's right there, and he's dominating me again. Pretty okay. cool, huh? Yeah, there's an answer so, for everything. Yeah. yeah, of course, there's always an answer. <laughs> anyway, no guys, sometimes uh, martial arts is messy and wild. And I admit that. And like, I'm always teaching my students to, to be realistic. And uh, you know, you might try something, it may not work that well for you. A lot of the reasons, usually the number one reason is you have to practice more. Uh, another reason is commonly body types. They don't adapt well to the specific technique. If I'm asking you to bear and bolo, but you're like a bowling ball, your your body looks like a bowling ball, man, but you're, and you're not flexible by that, I mean. You know, the bear and bolo just tends to not work so well. Um, so flexibility matters, strength matters, uh, body types do matter for certain techniques. If your legs aren't long enough to actually lock the body triangle on the back, it's not a move for you if you're not able to reach on your opponent. So um, those are some reasons, but this move can work for you. And there is an answer for everything if you train hard enough. So I hope you guys learned. Um, I was gonna show you more, but this video is going kind of long. We'll probably split it. We'll go into another video. Anyway, Matt, thank you so much for yeah, coming by. No, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate okay, Las Vegas. Do you want to shout out anybody or a gym or what? Anybody? Yeah, so I train at Las Vegas Syndicate MMA. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram. I've, 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 I've heard of Syndicate. Yeah, come by sometime. You, you guys, uh, yeah, Syndicate. I've heard of you guys, and yeah. you guys got a great guy here. So yeah, it's good to have people come. I good grappling competitions. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. It's good to have everybody, the whole community come together. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you guys. Please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.